Hello, in a former video, I've already checked out this SciSpace AI based research helping tool a little bit. The fastest research platform ever, as it is advertised here on the website. And um, I've asked it in the former video two questions one very general one about uh, my own topic of research interest uh, electromagnetic reverberation chambers. And the answer was somehow okay, but I would say the explanation here in the Wikipedia article is still better. And then I've asked it a more special question about really my personal field of research, field to wire coupling in such um, reverb chambers. And the answer was not really useful at all from my point of view. Um, unfortunately, I cannot find the former answers anymore. They, they seem not to be saved here somewhere. At least I cannot find them in my library and um, in my notebooks. There's just an empty notebook that has been saved here. Um, I can maybe open this up, but nothing useful there. It's just a getting started guide. So the thing that I would like to try out in this video is to chat with the PDF file. And so here you can upload a PDF file and I've selected one of my former papers. It's from a conference in 2015, so almost 10 years old. The AI database and so on should probably know about this paper. It's also published in the IEEE Explorer and um, has been written long before large language models have been, have been available. So this is something that definitely humans have written that me, me myself have written. Paper looks like this. And as you can see, as a typical engineering, electric engineering conference paper, it has something like six pages, um, lots of formulas, a couple of plots and so on and so on. So let's now open and upload this here. And I would um, now it's ask me where to save this. I will maybe save this in my notebooks and say I'm done. And I'm not sure how long it will take um, to process the paper, but it seems to be meaningful. And then the first proposal here is generate a summary of this papers of the paper and of the results of the paper. Hmm. Why not just read this, uh, re read the summary or the conclusion that is already given here? I mean, the author probably put some effort into writing this. So why, why to ask an AI to summarize this paper for you? Um, and there are 13 more questions that are proposed here. Conclusions, results, summary, conclusion. I would say this is, um, more or less the same. Explain the abstract of the paper. This seems to be interesting. We can try to, to do this in a second. Find related papers. Okay, related papers. I would just check what is mentioned in the references and which other papers reference this one here. You can find this in any literature database. Uh, for example, also on the IEEE Explore. Explain practical implications. Okay. Mm. This is also something interesting. Summarize introduction of this paper and literature survey of this paper. Methods used, limitations. Okay, so um, let's start with an explanation of the abstract. And I will scroll up so that you can also see the abstract. And maybe, oops, um, zoom in a little bit. The, the zoom seems to be very sensitive. Okay, so here's the abstract. Unfortunately, I, I, I cannot make it work that the abstract somehow fits here on the page. Okay, this looks good. So the paper the, 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 provides a concise summary. Here are the key points. Closed form solutions. Okay, we will find them in this paper. That's true. Generalization to networks. Okay, and the validation method and some numerical simulation and analysis of configurations. Okay. Hmm. Question is, so at least this is all right or seems to be correct without reading too much into detail there, but it's much longer than this. And okay, maybe this is the idea of an explanation that it extends this a little bit. So maybe 
uh, let's check the validation. The re results obtained are validated against the method of moments, a numerical technique used for solving integral equations, which adds credibility to the findings. Okay, I would, I would agree. And here always, of course, exactly this paper is cited in this specific part. Okay, so maybe what we can try is explain the practical implications of the paper. I'm not sure if I, if I have uh, such quite a time ago, if I have written about some practical applications, probably somewhere in the introduction. So has several practical implications, um, particular in electrical engineering and telecommunications. Okay, F theoretical framework and rework chambers, improved testing, okay, design of transmission line networks, understanding electromagnetic coupling. Hmm, okay, okay, telecommunications, reliability of telecommunication systems. Hmm. I would say this is quite in a distance from the paper, but might be some very, very, very far practical implication. And two wire multiconductor lines, industrial machinery. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, sounds not too bad. Um, Is some is some idea? Maybe maybe this is even more than that is written in the paper uh, because this is definitely something that I've not written in in the paper. Okay, and so methods used, what data has been used? Maybe maybe we'll ask for limitations. This is also something interesting um, because what I can tell while the large language model here calculates the result is that the uh, method here is based on transmission line equations, um, classical transmission line theory, and there are lots of simplifications and restrictions of the theory. Um, let's see if we will also find them here. So simplified models, single wire lines, complexities of real world transmission line networks, okay, assumption of plane waves. Um, of course, this may also not hold true in all scenarios. Multipath propagation near field effects. Okay, mismatched impedance effects. I think mismatched impedance, it may not fully. Okay, it says, yeah, we have the paper discusses the effects of mismatched impedances, but um, it may not fully explode the implications of various types of mismatches that can occur in practical applications. Mm, I'm not really sure what is meant with this because a mismatch is a mismatch. Um, I mean, there can be stronger and weaker mismatches, but if you, if you can do one, you can do them all. Limited frequency range. Um, I would say the frequency range in my analysis is here not limited at all. Um, of course, depending on the um, dimensions of the transmission line, you might get different resonant frequencies, but it is not limited to 100 megahertz or 300 megahertz, something like this. Um, it's more limited by the cross-section dimensions of the line. So if they are too large, then this already mentioned transmission and theory will not be applicable anymore and it won't just work. Need for experimental validation, of course, and computational constraints while the paper, da -da -dum, the complexity. Yeah, of course, if you have a numerical model, you always need to have a quite powerful computer. Uh, to calculate the result. So quickly ask these questions. How might the inclusion of multiple conductors uh, regarding current coupling in networks alter the findings? Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> this would be a good question. How do near field effects influence? So what I have to say at the moment, if you, um, if you are a student, if you are a PhD student and um, if you would like to work within a certain topic that you find of personal interest and but if you are not sure um, or if you are looking for ideas what could you do there or how could you improve then this might be useful but of course there are, are also already papers where multiconductor transmission lines um, are mentioned and where solutions for this 
topic and feet are presented. Um, but th these are interesting questions. So maybe we will go with this one and check what the AI model tells us. And so the idea would be um, to build up um, transmission line equations with matrices, with super matrices to include the effects um, between the conductors of a multiconductor transmission line table and the coupling of the external field. So let's see what we get here. Um, can be more complex. Okay, lead to enhanced coupling effects. Okay, um, let's see what paper is cited here. Ah, okay. Um, it also refers to this paper. Mutual inductance and capacitance. Okay. Okay, it also refers to this paper. So the... Um, Source, mm -hmm. resonance phenomena, nonlinear interactions. Nonlinear interactions has nothing to do with multiconductor transmission lines. Um, so nonlinear effects occur if you have nonlinear loads, if you have diodes, transistors, semiconductor elements like this. So this is simply wrong. And the complexity, of course, increases closed form solution. So this. I'm not sure if I can search here on this website. So there is something with matrix, but can I search here in this type? Let's see if I if I search. Okay. So there I find this word, but if I search for matrix, matrix will only be found in the paper. Um, but not in the answers of this AI model here. So, yeah, to summarize, if we want to include multi-conductor setups, we need to have matrix equations uh, that include this coupling. And yeah, this is all not really wrong, what is written here, but it is also not really helpful because the solution to this problem for the inclusion of multiple conductors would be matrix equations. Uh, including this multiconductor effect. So hmm, it's not uh, really helpful. And limitations of the paper. Okay, and I think there was a, another question uh, mentioned above that I do not find anymore, though I, maybe I have to go to read more. No, but the other question that was proposed here unfortunately is not visible anymore okay so um, what I thought at the beginning to have a look at this paper um, would be would be to ask some very specific questions um, to the content and the first question uh, would be how can the length of uh, transmission line be calculated And let's see what we get. And the answer should be in this equation here. Um, and this is um, just the length of a vector. Um, the Pythagoras theorem. And let's see what we get here. Um, the length of the transmission line can be calculated using specific parameters related to its physical and environmental characteristics. So the length is influenced by several factors, including the height of the wire above the ground, the radius of the wire, the permeability and permittivity. And sorry, this is all nonsense. It's all bullshit. It does not make any sense at all because the length of the wire just depends on the starting coordinate and the ending coordinate. Okay, so the exact is not explicitly provided in the context, but it typically involves the aforementioned parameters. It's also just wrong because this formula is given here. The length of the line can be calculated by. The impact of the ground plane can also affect the effective length of the transmission line. Yeah, maybe, um, but I was not asking for the effective lengths. I would ask. I was asking for the length of the line. 
and uh, application of transmission and theory which includes cross-section dimension this is what i mentioned before with this assumptions and restrictions and simplifications mm, yeah this is maybe true but does not answer this question at all so this is not helpful this is just i mean you are, you are asking a glass sphere and you are getting some result that sounds may sound meaningful but is just rubbish it's uh, it would not help you in any sense in your research uh, because it might and it does and it will point you into the wrong direction okay so uh, to finish this video let's ask the tool a last question so this was a very simple question um, the answer was wrong let's ask it a more elaborate question um, let's ask why matlab uh, was chosen chosen as a um, simulation tool or as a simulation environment for this research and not an established electromagnetic field simulator like CST Microwave Studio uh, which is based on a full wave solution of Maxwell's equations and so the answer is we want to simulate here this the zoom is very very strong um, the stochastic field coupling and you could simulate the coupling to uh, such a model to such a transmission line in in a numerical field simulator like cst or any other but it takes considerable time and if you want to do it statistically you need lots of samples so if your simulation takes just a minute but you need let's say a 10,000 uh, samples for your statistics you would need to wait 10,000 10, minutes which is quite a long time and one minute for such a simulation is maybe quite short so you would just take very very long and that's why we don't do a full wave simulation we just do plane wave coupling there, there's a closed form solution this can be done in MATLAB and it's much 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 faster maybe not that rigorous but um, still way 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 faster okay so let's see what the, the model here answers flexibility and customization high degree of flexibility customize their solutions to specific needs I mean this is a bogus answer this is particularly useful when developing new algorithms okay maybe yeah, of course in MATLAB you can program yourself um, so this customization is maybe true closed form solutions okay I mean um, this is already mentioned in the abstract this approach allows for rapid numerical evaluations okay yeah mm, um, okay this, this is somehow okay speed of simulation of course if I'm asking for speed um, then <laughs> speed might be a thing okay uh, at least it's mentioning the right thing from the paper uh, validation against established methods to ensure accuracy okay and ease of use of MATLAB user-friendly interface extensive experience and so on okay so this answer overall is not too wrong but um, it still not really answers the question why this established field simulator is not used why it would not be sufficient 
um, to do the research in this case. Yeah, so overall, I mean, even if this is not too wrong, it's also not too right and not too helpful at all. Um, let's have a last quick look onto this new question. How does MATLAB flexibility? Okay. Um, okay. Um, maybe we just ask back why has a program like CST Microwave Studio not been used. And I think now you can not just repeat stuff from the paper, you would have to um, have some kind of understanding of the topic here. Okay, the complexity of full wave simulations, which can be intensive and time consuming, the research, which can be, okay, it allows for quicker simulations, okay, not too bad. Um, okay, yeah, BAT equations, these transmission line equations used in the paper are not as easily uh, adaptable in Microwave Studio, this is also true, efficiency, Okay, user accessibility, okay, okay. Um, but, but yeah, um, the, the last thing is, I would not really agree. I mean, MATLAB, um, for researchers who might not have, okay. Hmm. But, I mean, ask a student or ask someone else, everyone would say, I would rather prefer um, a field simulator where I have some graphical user interface and I can click on this and click on that and uh, build up my model um, instead of having to program stuff on a command shell in MATLAB. But the main or the summarizing sentence here at the end is true, is influenced by the need for efficiency, focus on transmission line theory, um, and the desire for a more accessible, I'm not sure if this is the right word, but let's maybe flexible simulation environment, <laughs> a do-it-yourself simulation environment. Okay, um, yeah, so at the end, it's somehow okay, it's at some points not too wrong, um, but I think it's also not too helpful maybe it brings you to some ideas that you have not had before um, but you should definitely where was this question how is the length of the transmission line um, definitely not ask it <laughs> two technical questions because this the answer here to this question is just horribly wrong and i think this is always the issue so if you cannot if you don't have a clue um, if you are unsure if the if the answers that you get here from this tool if they are right or wrong if they can be right if they must be wrong don't use this tool because at the end um, you will create lots of wrong answers wrong papers bullshitting thesis and so on and so on um, don't do this <laughs>